Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Mary. Welcome to Chatterbox Box, an F1 podcast. Box Box. Welcome back to Chatterbox Box, where Emily and I chatter and giggle about all things F1. You guys may not have realized it, but I was in my own world for the past week doing work stuff. I don't know if it's important work stuff, but it was very hard for me to check in with Emily, figure out like what in the world happened in Formula One. And I'm back now. I'm so happy I can stay up to date and that I can giggle and that our voice memos can continue. This was the longest week of my life. I'm going to have to talk to your work because they can't do this to us again. We couldn't voice memo all week because she was actually like in the office at an office she's not even usually at. So we couldn't voice memo. She had to be professional. It was the (laughs) worst. I had so much tea every single day, as you all know. And every day I'm like, I need to tell Mary, but she was at work. So I'm glad she's back. (laughs) I'm so glad I was working weird hours too. So it wasn't even like I could call Emily up to be like, hey, what's the hot goss? Because I would finish work when she started sleeping. (laughs) Yeah, you were working like night shifts on a different time zone. I was so confused. I had no idea. I was like going through withdrawal. (laughs) (laughs) I was too, but I am super happy to be back. And also the fact that it is International Women's Month and we were able to kick off Women's International Day with our first F1 Academy race. Yes, it was so exciting. I'm really enjoying watching F1 Academy this year. It's really cool seeing all the different liberties and all the team support from the F1 teams. And it was an exciting race. Races, there's two. And I enjoyed them both. I enjoyed the quali. And I am thinking that in F1 Academy, we are going to get a Max Verstappen level domination with Dorian Penn because she just seems un reachable. (laughs) Yes, she was such a joy to watch. And I loved just seeing how supportive all of the drivers were with each other. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as drivers, they are extremely competitive. But it was really nice to see everyone being supportive of each other, especially when Abby Poling won poll after the Dorian Penn investigation. It obviously like no one wanted to win that way and they wanted to do things right and it was just a refreshing race i think even if we are going to see a max verstappen-esque situation with dorian it i don't know like for me i was like thoroughly enjoying watching f1 academy I really enjoyed seeing some support from the f1 people i saw some post about Checo and Liam Lawson being in the garage, helping the Red Bull girls and giving them some tips before their first race. Obviously, Lewis was there. Lewis is always their biggest supporter, an absolute king. And Zach Brown was there on the first day, which I thought was really great. He watched the whole race, it looked like. And that was awesome. Kind of becoming a fan of Zach Brown this week. So shout out to him. Yeah, I wasn't able to get all of the tea, but you did tell me um, how Zach has been extremely supportive of women in motorsports. And honestly, I continue loving all of the F1 drivers and all of the team principals and CEOs that are adamantly talking about their support for women, their support for women in motorsports, whether that's driving, being a journalist, all things like that. It's just really nice to continue seeing that support and hearing about it. It just validates that what we're doing is great and that we're here to stay. Yeah, I loved, loved, loved Lara Winter's International Women's Day speech and how she touched on some of the drama that's been going on, but reiterated that women are here to stay in the sport. I thought that that was really great. It was honestly really needed because 
we don't want to go a ton into this because as everybody knows, there's still not any transparency around the situation and we don't want to speculate, but everything that has been going on with the whole Christian Horner and Red Bull situation and the online rhetoric about it, some of the comments from the more traditional fans about just the nature of women being in the sport and some of the comments from the drivers were a little disappointing and left us and a lot of female fans feeling a little discouraged about this sport in general. And I think this weekend was kind of exactly what I needed to get me re-energized in the sport. I really enjoyed getting to see the girls in F1 Academy and see the support that they were getting. I really enjoyed Lara Winter's speech and what everyone was doing for International Women's Day. So not to say that it erases all of the other stuff that's been going on, but it just helped a little bit to shift my energy and give me a different perspective and a little bit more of a positive outlook. Absolutely. I know I had struggled with it the entire week. Didn't really have a lot of time to digest it because of like the balancing of work and life. But it was really nice to come back home and see this united front with all of our women in motorsports. And if you are listening and if you are a woman, we appreciate you. We love you. And this is a safe space for all of you, whether you are a casual Formula One watcher, whether you are here because of Drive to Survive. It doesn't matter. As long as you appreciate and love the sport, we are here with you all. Yes, we are 100% here for girls in motorsport, whether it's working in motorsport, driving in motorsport, or being a fan of motorsport. Like Laura Winter said, we are here to stay. We're not going anywhere. And I hope to see the sport shift even more to continue to support women in motorsport. Absolutely. Not to take away from women, but the other kind of thing that really made the Formula One races a little bit more refreshing was Oliver Behrman's entry Mm -hmm. into Formula One. Very sad that Carlos had appendicitis and needed to go into surgery, but honestly, like seeing Ollie was, I think, the highlight of quali and also the race for me. What were your thoughts on just the race weekend? I absolutely loved this race weekend. I will be so honest here. After last week, I was feeling bummed to basically, it felt like just get a repeat of last year, repeat of the Red Bull domination of no one else can even hold a candle. And I felt last week the commentators weren't, doing as well on highlighting the midfield battles. This week, I was going into it a little jaded, a little like, oh my gosh, like I don't really want to watch Max win again. And Ollie coming in just really reignited my energy and my enjoyment of this sport. It was so nice to have someone to root for. I mean, I always have someone to root for, right? But like, you know that Ollie coming into F1 is not going to get on the podium probably. So it was fun to just root for him to just get points and to be able to see that happen was really, really great. Really enjoyed the whole interactions between him and his dad and how the camera kept petting his dad and how stressed out his dad looked. It just made the weekend have a whole nice new fresh energy to it. It made me think that I definitely am ready to see some new faces on the grid and hope to get some rookies in next year. I don't know if Ollie is too young to join the F1 grid permanently next year, but I would love to see him and Liam and maybe Felipe Drogovic just come in and shake things up a little bit. Absolutely. I didn't realize that I needed to see a new driver, but seeing how excited I was to root for Oliver, Ollie, and just seeing like how that changed the entire energy. I don't know if the drivers themselves felt it, but it was just nice to see how everyone was supportive of Ollie, like Lewis at the end of the race, Seb messaging Ollie before the race and rooting him on. It was just a really nice experience. I would definitely love to see Ollie, Liam back in Formula One. I'm hearing like talks about 
Ollie going to Haas. I don't know how I feel about that, but if it gives him a position in Formula One, I would be all for it. Yeah, that's so interesting because I actually feel that the Haas boys are doing pretty well so far this season. So I'd be interested to see whose seat he takes or if he ends up going somewhere else. I don't know. It'll be interesting. I would love to see him. I also, yeah, like I said, I want Liam to come. Just want some new faces in the grid, I think. And hopefully we get that. We shall see. So kicking it off with the race weekend in general, I didn't watch any of the free practices. I don't think you were able to either because as we said Mary was off being a professional queen but what I did tune into was media day obviously (laughs) and I loved following the outfits of the drivers coming into media day everybody was rocking like a monochromatic look we either had a pale neutral monochrome or we had a dark monochrome it was very entertaining then of course we had the Ferrari boys in their boring team kit always like please let them wear outfits I really want to see what Lewis does next year when he's in Ferrari because so much of his brand is coming to the paddock in a fly outfit (laughs) so is Ferrari gonna let him do that is he gonna have to wear the team shirts I don't know I feel like it must be in his contract that he's allowed to wear his outfits but what do you think it has to be because what is Lewis without all of his like brand new outfits I look forward to seeing Lewis in his outfits like before during and after the races like it is just so iconic and I can't imagine him doing anything in just the Ferrari team kit unless he's going to rip it up and do some (laughs) stuff with it although I'm pretty sure That is not within the contract. I think they will be very upset if he just started cutting into his shirts. But yeah. (laughs) Why am I picturing Lewis in like a cropped Ferrari (laughs) t-shirt? Oh, no. I I can see that. Uh, He He would look so good. Like he would definitely look so good. But it's just so funny to think. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. The other thing that I would love to see is Charles to expand and experiment with his fashion. I know he also likes to experiment, but I imagine that he's just a little bit more safe than Lewis. So being able to see Lewis kind of like hint, hint, nudge, nudge, like, why don't you try this really weird thing on? Like, I think Mm -hmm. that would be so delightful to see. Not sure if we're going to get a C squared kind of situation with media day between Charles and Lewis, but maybe a fashion media day for the two of them would be so cute. That would be so great. I really hope that happens. Let's speak that into existence. Also, outside of Lewis, I was very surprised that I was very impressed with Lance Stroll. Like, he did something to me during the media day outfits. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, him and his black fits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Yeah, I... I, I, I think I might be a Lance girly. Something's happening to me with Lance Stroll. His past two like media day outfits have been so good. They've also been very similar, kind of almost like a formula of, you know, black pants, black shirt, black jacket. <laughs> but if it's not broke, don't fix it. It's working for him. We did a little video on our TikTok about the media day outfits. And I had been talking about, wow, Lance, what? And somebody commented and let me know that his dad is a fashion mogul. And his mom, I believe, is like a model. I literally had no idea what Lawrence Stroll does outside of owning an Aston Martin F1 team, which is so dumb because obviously he had to get rich from something else. But apparently it was, he's a fashion <laughs> mogul. So, okay, let's. where has this energy been this whole time? Has he always looked this good and we just didn't know? Like, I was shocked. I was shocked. I need to know. And maybe we should get some fashion tips from Lance. Like, how do we build the perfect media day outfit capsule? No, we need to know because he's really giving capsule wardrobe. I also was very impressed by SD Bestie wearing this like fabulous like full neutral 
matching set kind of vibe. I will say that it was very relatable to me because I also don't iron my clothes, but I maybe would have ironed my clothes if I knew I was going to be photographed like that because you could very clearly see like where the shirt was folded up in the suitcase. And I think that just added to the appeal of SD Bestie for me because he's real, he's relatable. <laughs> Hashtag relatable. I'm here for yes. it because I don't. I don't iron my clothes and I don't even steam my clothes. So it is what it is. No. If it comes out wrinkly, then that is the best version you will ever get of me. Yeah. So I really enjoyed keeping up with the media day this week. I did not watch the free practices, but I was keeping up with what was going on. It was a little hard to watch everything this week because also having F1 Academy the same week, we had an additional like practice quali two races to watch i didn't watch the practice for that either just quali in the two races so there was a lot to tune into and i just did not have time for free practice but i was keeping up with what was going on and um i think it was a little bit more consistent with the expectation for the race this week max and check were doing well in free practice and it wasn't feeding our delusion that maybe someone else would win except for a brief moment with fernando doing really well so i appreciated that because i really do every week feed into the free practice delusion every week i tell myself not to and every week i let myself start to daydream about whoever's doing well in free practice <laughs> It is so hard because I know they're trying to get used to the track, but I'm like, you guys don't need that. You guys have driven on these tracks for like ever. Like Fernando has obviously been in the loop for quite some time now. But yeah, like I definitely get excited about the results from free practice. I was a little bit confused about free practice, like the third one, because I had seen that Logan couldn't get a time in and I was like oh like why why is that mm -hmm. but supposedly there was um, a bit of damage to the car and he was not able to get some time in with that so that was a little bit sad yeah yeah and I think there was something with um Joe Guan Yu in the third free practice as well because I know he couldn't even really get a time in in quali yeah. because of damage supposedly Joe Guan Yu also crashed in free practice three so he couldn't actually run and not to get ahead to quali but he was able to go out with only like two minutes to spare in q1 and unfortunately mm -hmm. he just couldn't get the time like he was just a little bit too late much yeah. to um, Sauber's efforts to like fixing the car as quickly as possible yeah well I think that is a good segue into quality unless you have anything else to say about the free practices no I think that's it I think for me, Quali, once again, theme of the weekend, all eyes on Ollie. That was all I was really focusing on and pay atten paying attention to. Um, I loved the how they kept panning the camera to his dad. That was so <laughs> funny to me. What are your takeaways from Quali? <laughs> I was also taking a look at Ollie's performance and definitely rooting for him. The other driver that I was rooting for was Oscar Piastri. I was definitely impressed by him. In, mm -hmm. I think, Q1, he had, like, clipped the wall, but was still in good standing. That was still a very good lap. And I was just genuinely, like, very impressed by that. Because if I had clipped a wall, I think that would deter me like I would be taken aback and I wouldn't stay focused on my drive and my time so mm -hmm. just very impressed by Oscar and being able to stay focused Oscar I think could teach a master class on mindfulness and staying focused not letting his emotions get to him he is phenomenally emotionally mature for his age and for his experience he is so unruffled so calm cool and collected i really feel like oscar is going to grow into one of the greats of the sport for that reason i agree and even listening to the team radio he was like i clipped a wall <laughs> and that was yeah. it. it. He didn't freak out, which was just really refreshing. It was just a simple message to the engineers to inform them of what had happened so that they can mm -hmm. see if like anything else was affected by hitting that wall. But yeah, it was just like, I, I was just so impressed by that. 
Yeah, one thing I love about him is he's never the person who's like aggressively screaming at the team on the radio. It's always so calm. I don't think I've ever heard him react. Sometimes I get worried about him and I'm like, is this man like suppressing his emotions? Because he is so calm, but I admire it about him. I definitely admire that. Definitely a good trait to have, especially if you want to stay within the mindset of being focused on your race and your drive, like not focusing on anyone else and just staying kind of like within your lane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And also in Q2, I feel like Charles always does well in mm-hmm. quality. Like he's almost always able to keep a good pace but in q2 i was mostly focused on ollie the time difference between him and was it lewis was Mm -hmm. like 0.036 seconds he was so close to getting into q3 that i was like almost up and screaming at the TV. I was like, oh my God, please. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I know that was such a hard moment for me because I was like, I want to see Ollie just come into Q3, but that would be knocking out Lewis Hamilton, my favorite driver. So that was really tough for me. And I think it also highlighted that the Mercedes car is once again, not good this season because Ollie, I don't want to downplay his achievement. He seems to be a very good driver. I know he's been doing very well in F2, but a lot of this has to be the car as well, right? Like a brand new rookie coming in with one hour of free practice and doing that well. Like the Ferrari must be really good this season. And it makes me excited to see like how Lewis is going to perform next year in the Ferrari because the Mercedes clearly is not cutting it. Yeah, that was extremely conflicting for me. Obviously, I want Lewis to do well, but I don't know. This season, Lewis just seems very casual. Obviously, he wants to try his best, but it seems like he's taken a step back from being as serious as he could be and just enjoying his time as a driver in his last year at Mercedes, being a little bit more mindful of the other drivers and supporting the other drivers. Like this just seems like a retirement garden leave situation for him. Like he's no, yeah, unbothered. (laughs) Yeah, it's very much giving that energy when you put in your two weeks notice and you could not care less and you're just coming to work as you're obligated to do for your last two weeks, just phoning it in, doing the bare minimum. That's the energy this is giving. And I'm here for it. I support it. But I don't know how he's going to maintain this for the entire season. Yeah, I I look forward to seeing him at least doing the best he can, but I also am enjoying his unbothered personality. It is what it is. Yeah, the car sucks. I'm mm-hmm. obviously going to drive it, but I'm looking forward to next year where I don't have to drive the Mercedes again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then on Q3... That was pretty standard. I felt like nothing like really shocking. Charles continues to be qualifying king, always does so well in qualifying. And it always makes me think about how would he perform if he was in the Red Bull or in a car similar to the Red Bull, because it just really feels like Charles has the skill and Ferrari has the car to match and pretty much go neck and neck with the Red Bull over shorter distances But it just seems like they can't maintain it for the whole race, which is so frustrating. (laughs) It is. It is. I feel like this might be a really good segue into the race if Mm -hmm. you don't have any other thoughts. Yeah, I don't have anything else from Quali. We'll just say the top 10. It was Verstappen, Leclerc, Checo Perez, Fernando Alonso, Oscar Piastri, Lando Norris, George Russell, Lewis Hamilton, Yuki Tsunoda, and Lance Stroll. So nothing extremely shocking or out of the ordinary other than maybe Yuki showing up in top 10. Yeah, for sure. Trying to go back to Charles and not being able to keep the same pace as the Red mm-hmm. Bulls can. I was so excited at the very beginning having him battle it out with Checo for second place I was like crossing my fingers crossing my toes I was like please stay in second place you can do this unfortunately like it just could not happen but he really did 
hold on to his position as best as he could. Mm -hmm. I think he fended off Checo for one turn, and then at the next turn, it just didn't play out in his favor. Mm -hmm. He really tried to hold them off. He really did. And I was proud of him that he maintained that third place pretty much throughout the whole race. Very calm, cool, collected drive. No errors, no crashes, no DNFs. Is Charles Luck reversing? Are we like switching to good luck, Charles? I don't I don't even think I should say that out loud because I do not want to jinx him. But it was it was great to see. It also made me wonder how the results would have been if Carlos was in the race. I don't know. Speculation. Maybe we would have had two Red Bulls in the top three, but that didn't happen. So just speculation. <laughs> yeah, I feel like people would hate me for this, but if Char- or if Carlos was available to race, I imagine it would be the same outcome as the last race in Bahrain, which is the Red Bull 1-2, and then the mm-hmm. Ferrari 3-4, but I think Carlos would have taken third position, and yeah. Charles would have been in fourth. I mean, I think that's pretty consistent with what we've seen in the last several races, like even going back into last season yeah. with Singapore and stuff. I, I do agree with that. I am excited for Carlos to come back, though, and hopefully he's back in Australia. I mean, he was out walking around on the paddock on uh, Saturday, like the day after surgery, which is just wild. I don't know if you know this, but Carlos is a Virgo, and... That is just so Virgo energy to not let yourself take a break and to just show up and be walking around. Carlos, please, you can just (laughs) keep your sweatpants on and stay in the hotel. You don't have to be here. (laughs) So Virgo. Oh my gosh. I was so impressed by that. But I also was like, please stay back at the hotel. He seemed a little out of it. We joke about how Carlos always has a look that he's thinking very intensely. Mm -hmm. But I think like whenever the cameras panned to him this time it was like that times 10 I'm sure he must be loopy on like all of the meds to make him feel better and he really wanted to continue rooting for everyone but you could tell he was really trying to concentrate and just keep going I imagine that he's under a lot of pressure right now because he doesn't have a seat yet. So he was probably telling himself, I need to show up and look like I'm good. I'm a dedicated athlete. I, you know, ride or die for F1. Like, give me a seat next year. I think maybe if he had a guaranteed seat next year, maybe he would have stayed home. But I enjoyed watching him support Ollie. Like him and his dad were sitting with Ollie's dad in the garage. And that was really cute. It was really cute. I was happy to see Carlos. It looked like surgery went well. Everyone said surgery went well, but it was a relief to see him out and about, slowly moving, but still there to support the team. Kudos to you, Carlos, because I would have milked that and stayed in the hotel. (laughs) Same, same. Let's talk about Lance Stroll (laughs) driving into the wall. This was, I believe, at like lap seven at turn 23. (laughs) I I hate to make fun of the situation, but I think like at one point during like on the radio, they were like, can you drive it back? And he was like, no, I'm in the I'm in the wall. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I think that, oh, that, that, <laughs> that was my favorite radio message of the race for sure. It was just so funny. No, I can't drive the car back. Like, it's, <laughs> look at the camera. It's crashed. I also like, thank you so much, Lance, for that because I feel like that added so much spice and excitement to the race. I love when we get a safety car and we get a restart and you get to see like, what's the vibe here? Are we going to get any excitement? Can someone overtake Max? Because that tends to be our only hope of someone getting in front of him is if he starts in pole, our only hope of someone getting in front of him is a safety car. So I was here for it and I felt that it caused so much chaos because then for a while we had Lando in first and then I think he was he in second or was he in third for most of the race after that? I don't remember. I think he was in third or something. He was up there. He was up there for sure. Lewis was up there as well. No, I think maybe it was Lewis in third. 
and Lando oh, was yeah, like yeah. in fourth or something. And yeah. they were those two and Joe Guan Yu were the only people who did not get the chance to pit during the safety car. So it really was discouraging because I was rooting for Lewis and Lando and I was like, oh my gosh, like look how well they're doing. But I knew that it was going to take a miracle pit strategy to get them to keep those spots. And we didn't get another safety car. I think maybe things would have been different if we got another safety car. Maybe they could have maintained those positions. But yeah, it was fun to see them up as high as they were for as long as they were. And I do want to say, I think that this was our, like being relatively newer fans, our first chance to see Lewis in his greatness. Because I was so impressed with him watching him maintain that spot from Oscar on way older tires, like just the defensive driving he was doing was so phenomenal to watch. And we didn't get to see the Lewis domination era, unfortunately. So it was just a really cool testament to the fact that like, wait, he actually is like a phenomenal driver. He's just in a bad car right now. And it made me even more excited for the Lewis to Ferrari era that we're getting next year. I agree with you. Seeing Lewis on old, was it old hearts? Just the- I think it was mediums. Oh, old mediums, like Mm -hmm. almost 60, 70% of the race. I was like, holy crap. And he's fending from Oscar who was on new tires. I was eating that up. It honestly was so exciting. I was rooting for him and like the entire time I was like, come on, Lewis, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Obviously not being completely Delulu and knowing that the best he can probably do at this time is to hold off Oscar from overtaking him. But it Mm -hmm. was just such a joy to see because I know Oscar did attempt at least two times to overtake. And there was one time where he did, but then Lewis took back his position I was like yes best feeling ever yeah I think he overtook off the track by accident and then had to give it back and I was like okay the battle is on it took him a long time to overtake Lewis I think he said he was behind him for 20 laps that's a long time to hold someone off when you're on older tires so really admire him for that and it was fun to watch it gave us something to focus on that wasn't like max driving off into the distance which i really appreciated there was a lot of other things to focus on i felt i felt i was on the edge of my seat for this whole race like fully engrossed and i was able to disassociate from the red bull domination at the top i honestly did not even thinking think about it at all until we got to the end and they were on the podium and I was like, Oh wait, yeah, they did win the race. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was really helpful for the recording and watching it live. I don't Mm. think they panned to max until the very end when the race was finished, which was really exciting. Like I didn't think about max. I didn't really like, I hate to say this. I didn't even think about Charles. Like, My man was staying in third. It was just such a nice expectation. I was like, yeah, Charles Mm -hmm. will be fine. It's fine. But yeah, my like eyes and my focus were essentially around Ollie and the lower half of the grid. Speaking of favorite radio moments, when Ollie came onto the radio and he was like, mate, he's so slow. (laughs) And this was in context of him trying to get past Nico Hulkenberg and he was essentially Nico was essentially just maintaining his tires and he didn't really want to overtake or go too fast but he was holding off Ollie like really well until he just couldn't anymore but I was like damn Ollie you first race getting a little bit sassy like kudos to you I was like oh okay Ollie is uh 18 and (laughs) Nico has been on the grid since Ollie was five (laughs) I cannot can you imagine overtaking someone who's had your job since you were five I can't even imagine what a bizarre feeling that would have been. I would be feeling myself. I'd be like, yeah, hell yeah. Give me a (laughs) seat. I will go to Haas. (laughs) 
<laughs> Ollie, speaking of Ollie on the radio, at the end of the race, he came on the radio and he's like, yeah, I know that was a really bad drive. And everybody was like, what are you talking about? Can we you did great. Uh, hype yourself up. Enjoy the moment. You Like he got, was it seventh? I think he ended in seventh. He ended in seventh. That is a fantastic That's first unreal. Time drive. I mean, especially, I think he started in 11th. Yeah, especially because he didn't even get the first two practices. Mm-hmm. He jumped into the third practice, jumped into quality. Like, he only had maybe two hours with that car. Yeah, yeah. And, I, oh, I actually felt bad for him because I think he, he qualified on pole in F2. And he had to, like, give that up to come and do this. <sighs> Obviously, who wouldn't yeah. give that up to come race in f1 for the weekend but he missed out on a ton of points in f2 that could impact like whether or not he wins f2 this year so that must have been hard but also you can't really compete with getting to drive the f1 car for the weekend i really enjoyed him i i don't want him to come back this season because that would mean for some reason Charles and carlos are out Mm -hmm. but i don't think this is the last we'll see of him No, I am excited to see more of him. I'm definitely excited to see him in Formula One Mm -hmm. in the near-ish future, not this season. Definitely want Carlos and Charles to finish out their season strong as teammates together Mm -hmm. um, for their last run. But yeah, I cannot wait for the day that we see Ollie back in Formula One in his own car. Yeah, I also thought it was so wholesome how everybody came together to vote him for driver of the day. It was like a resounding win. Um, And that was just really heartwarming because I think the sport, as we touched on in the beginning of the episode, has felt a little divided this week with everything that's been going on. And it just felt like this big, like unifying moment of everybody rooting for this rookie. And that was really sweet. It was really sweet. I was actually on the borderline of voting for Ollie or K-Mag, and Mm. I'm so glad I voted for Ollie, but can we just take a moment to talk about K-Mag's drive? He was, one, super aggressive, Mm. (laughs) two, holding off, I think, five other drivers, and I think at one moment, Charles was like... K Mag is like in front of like bright blue. <laughs> <laughs> like he was holding off V Carb, he was holding off Williams, mm-hmm. and it was just so interesting. And I think everyone was upset. Like Yuki was upset. Um, Alex Albon, who I don't typically hear him getting upset, but Alex was upset as well. And K Mag was just doing his own thing. He was like blocking people mm-hmm. and just enjoying his time to the point where I think we were questioning if he knew that he had a 20 second penalty or two 10 second penalties. And uh, like he was just driving to drive. And also, like his um, partner, Nico Hulkenberg, who was in 10th. We were just curious if they had actually told K-Mag that he had those penalties and if he was just doing his drive for himself or Mm -hmm. was it actually like a team thing? Like, hey, I know you have your penalties, but Hulkenberg is up in 10th place. Let's try and one, maintain those tires and two, hold off the rest of the grid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I keep forgetting to use my multi-viewer and watch the radios, so I completely missed if he was told about the penalty. It felt, or the penalties, (laughs) it felt like maybe he was, but I don't think he was told about it. Just speaking of the penalties in general, it felt very harsh. Two 10-second penalties for someone who's in P12, like... He's not getting points anyway. What is the punishment here? I don't understand. It seems like the penalties were really harsh this week. We didn't talk about this when we talked about F1 Academy. So I'll also mention that Dorian Pan won the second race. And something happened where she either didn't see the checkered flag or... And then she went on the radio and she was like, what lap was that? And no one was answering her. So she just raced a whole full second lap, which is like her fault for not seeing the checkered flag. And then also her team's fault for not answering her. 
So she went a whole nother lap at full race speed and crossed the checkered flag twice. And she ended up getting, I can't remember if it was a 10 second or a 20 second penalty, but another big, big time amount penalty and ended up losing her win. And it was then, you know, Abby Pulling was promoted up and was like, I'm really happy to get this, but I don't feel that it was under the best circumstances. So I don't know what was going on in Saudi Arabia, but it felt like all the penalties were very, very harsh. Somebody said something about new regulation that I didn't get a chance to look into, but I'm wondering if we're going to continue seeing these big time penalties because Checo also got a five second penalty, it ended up not really mattering because he was five seconds ahead of Charles or more than five seconds ahead of Charles. So it really didn't impact him that much. But like, if, if we're starting to give like Max and Checo, like five, 10, 20 second penalties, like that may actually make the race more competitive. So I'm just curious where that's coming from. I don't remember seeing penalties of that big of a time duration last season yeah I I felt like 10 seconds was harsh on I think at least one of the penalties for K-Mag the other Mm. 10 second one I think was a little bit warranted because it did cause a little bit of trouble for a couple of drivers and potentially made them like crash so Mm. that I definitely understood but like the other one I was like that was like a little bit uncalled for and like, I'm pretty sure that K-Mag holding off the rest of the grid was part of the strategy, at least mm-hmm. from, like, what I've heard, Kamatsu Haas's team principal had talked about that strategy and what it meant for the team to get that one point from Hulkenberg. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely felt like K-Mag was holding off the rest of the people to try to help Nico secure his spot so good teamwork for them which look how far they've come because they used to really not get along right yes so oh, that's great so proud of them them both being dads understanding the meaning of teamwork and no longer being as hot-headed as they were before they actually had to raise a family I don't know I I feel like that is a very good Hallmark movie moment yes okay wholesome activities at Haas <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I don't really have anything from anything else from this race, but I will say that I just appreciated this race in general. And it really reignited my excitement for the sport because I know everybody says you can't just focus on the top three, whatever. But I think in the US, we're very used to rooting for sports where you are just rooting for the winner. And it's been a hard shift to put my mindset into focusing more on the midfield or more for who's ever getting P3. And this race, I felt the announcers did a really, really good job of keeping us engaged in the midfield and making the race more exciting. So I really appreciated that. I hope that continues. I hope we get more midfield battles. I hope it's easy to stay this engaged with the rest of the drivers throughout the rest of the season. Absolutely. Yeah. I will say that as much as I didn't like seeing Max and Checo winning, my mind was entirely engaged with every other driver Mm -hmm. to the point where I like, this is the last highlight that I wanted to mention, but I like me forgetting about Charles in third position. But then as he was finishing the final lap, he got the fastest lap at the end, which mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. incredible. I felt a little bit conflicted about that because Lewis had held the fastest lap. They're going to be teammates, so it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It was just really nice to see Charles like in his own zone, being confident that he was going to keep third um, position. And then also like the cherry on top was that he mm-hmm. overall got the fastest lap. It's so hard when your two favorites are competing for something. I'm like, ugh, ugh. but I, I will guess. take that next year when Ferrari is doing phenomenally and Lewis and Charles are competing for P1 manifestation. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Ferrari won two. 
Yeah, every single race. And that's all we will take. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what time it is. It's time for us to check in on our bingo board. I think that we have some new things to check off. So last week, we were able to check off Beef Between Drivers, Lewis and Charles Content, Petty Radio Messages, and Max 10 Plus Second Lead. I don't think we can check off 10 plus second lead again this week. I think he was only like eight seconds ahead. But what we can check off is reserve driver races. Woohoo. Thank you so much, Ollie. Yay. I think we can also check off Oscar doing better than Lando because Oscar came in Oscar came in fourth. Fifth. Yeah. And Lando came in eighth. Um, I think a lot of that was due to the unfortunate pit stop timing, but we'll take it. I think it's worthy of checking it off. Do you think we should check off F1, F1 Academy collab? Because it wasn't a formal collab, but people were spending time together, going out to support. We had Lewis there. We had the Red Bull boys in the garage. So I want to check it off, but it doesn't really feel like a formal collab. So maybe we leave it. Maybe we leave it with the note that it could have happened in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're checking off reserve driver races and Oscar doing better than Lando. We don't have bingo yet, but bingo is coming. It's coming. It's near. (laughs) It's near. Ah, well, that is amazing. I am so happy I was able to get back in time for the race and to check in with Emily. Next week, we are resuming our book club series. We will be reading Wrecked by Lauren Asher. That is the third book in the Dirty Air series. So if you want to pick it up and try to read along with us this week, we would love that. Really trying to fill these non-race weeks with fun things. And we are very excited to, to read this book. We took a little bit of a break from the Dirty Air series. So happy to dive back in and can't wait to talk about it with you all next week. Awesome. Well, happy reading, everyone, and happy reading to the both of us. We will catch you in our next episode. But if there's anything else that comes up that you want to talk to us about, please feel free to reach out to us on our socials, Chatterbox Box or Chatterbox Box F1, depending on the social media platform that you are looking at. But thanks so much, everyone. That's it for me. Over and out. Bye. Bye, F1 world. No, not yet, not yet. Oh, no, I'm saying like bye for today.